Belli, how are you? Now, if I say Renaissance, close your eyes, what do you think? Yes, Florence, I know. Florence is universally considered the cradle of Renaissance, but do you know what does it mean, Renaissance? Renaissance means rebirth. It was a period of rebirth of economy, politics, art, culture, etc, etc, all around Europe. So, as Florence got uh, its own rulers, the Medici, many other Italian cities got their own rulers. For example, Mantua with the Gonzaga, or uh, Urbino with uh, Federico da Montefeltro. And what about the place where we are today? Ferrara with the family d'Este. Be ready to discover with me a Renaissance city, Ferrara. Andiamo! Stay with me till the end of this video and I'm going to give you a spicy tip. Shh, keep the secret. In 1385, a terrible riot convinced Niccolò de Secondeste, nicknamed Lo Zoppo de Lane, to build a fortress in order to protect himself and his family. The family d'Este, through the centuries, was able to reach the rank of dukes, so the original fortress was then embellished because it became the official residence of the family. Hey, you wanna look like locals? Drive a bike then! Everybody drive a bike here! I think they get born with a bike attached somewhere and they have a lot of fun! This is the cathedral dedicated to St. George, date back to 1135, was the year of the consecration. One of the main masters that worked at this building was the sculpture called Niccolò. The bell tower is the most recent part of the church, date back to the 1412, apparently was designed by Leon Battista Alberti, it is unfinished. But the real extravaganza of Ferrara is the lower part of the church. If you look behind me, there is a long porch, and this is the place where in the last 800 years the Ferrarese inhabitants, they have been doing the market. Now, it is very unusual, guys. Because in the past, the church was one thing representing the religion and the market was something else, it represented business. They were never together. Here, they are attached. But even more extravagant is the, the last level of the church where you can see an incredible collection of columns. They are all in pairs. They date back to the Middle Age. And they are all different. Are you sure that the Middle Age is a Dark Age? I'm not really sure about it. Hey guys, what happened in 1492? Yes, the discovery of America. Thank you for your spontaneous answer. But what happened in Europe and in Ferrara? In Ferrara, the lord of the time, Ercole I d'Este, and his architect, Biagio Rossetti, they planned the first urban extension of the Middle Age. It was something absolutely incredible. Basically, the lord of the city decided to double the size of Ferrara building a new district with specific rules like straight roads and building with the same height. It was something absolutely futuristic. And look at this amazing building. This is not just a Renaissance building. It is one of the most important Renaissance buildings in the world. It is called Palazzo dei Diamanti, the Palace of Diamond. And the name comes from this unusual decoration made with diamond-shaped block of marbles. They are 8,500. What about the gentleman horsebacking behind me? His name was Niccolò d'Este. He was a Marquis and a great ruler. Apparently, he was able to obtain the independence from Venice, any available land around the River Po, and any available young woman of the area. In fact, according to gossip, he got more than 800 lovers. And here there is a proverb that says, on this side and on the other side of the River Po, they are all children of Niccolò. Mmm, spicy! But what about his family life? He got married as a second wife, a much younger woman, an aristocrat one, Laura Malatesta, aka La Parisina. They were together for a while, for a few years, but then, ah, the tragedy. 
she fell in love with one of the legitimate son of Niccolò, Ugo. They tried to be as much discreet as possible, but they were discovered. So they were imprisoned in the dungeon and then they were beheaded. Oh, what a drama, what a drama! Ferrara gave birth to many important people, among which we have the guy with the severe look behind me, Girolamo Savonarola, a Dominican friar that was born here in 1452. He was a very active preacher in Florence during the Renaissance. He denounced exploitation of the poor by the Catholic Church, despotic rules, corruption, etc., etc. Of course, he was excommunicated by Pope Alexander VI Borgia, and then he was in prison in the dungeon. He was uh, killed, he was hanged in a public square, and the body was even burned. Pentitevi peccatori, repent sinners! Ferrara was included in the UNESCO World Heritage List twice, in 1995 as a great example of Renaissance City, and in 1999 when the suburban villas built by the family d'Este, called Delizie, were included in the list. Now we are in the garden of one of these Delizie. This is Palazzo Schifanoia, and it was enlarged in 1400 during the Lordship of Borzo d'Este, let's say 1450-1471. Schifanoia comes from the word schifare or schivare to avoid and noia boredom and in fact here the lord can host and impress his guest, notable guests, and then he can indulge into paintings, poetry, music and something else that I cannot say. Too am I, too much information. This is the main facade of Palazzo Schifanoia, today is a museum. You can visit it, only few rooms are open to public, but enough to fill the outstanding splendor of Ferrara during the Renaissance. Pretending to be a local, I'm biking on top of the city walls. Be careful, they are not very wide. However, it is a wonderful experience. Don't miss it while in Ferrara. And as I promised, my spicy tip. Behind me, a former church turned into an adult movie theater, one of the last of Italy. It is called Mignon. <gasps> a church <gasps> turned into an adult movie theater? Yes, and in both cases, a lot of faithful people, guys. A lot. And if you are in Ferrara, you must try Cappellacci, kind of big tortellini with pumpkin inside, or pasticcio, is a sweet crust with pasta, ground meat, and bechamel sauce. If you want some bread, coppiette, little couples that you can share, and a great red Lambrusco wine to wash your palate. Salute! And we are at the very top of the castle and with this beautiful view I will say goodbye to you. Subscribe, stay tuned, see you next time. Un bacio!